Oh, what have we got here? Looks like a big plate of pasta, maybe. Oh, yum. Let's add some pesto to that, or maybe arrabbiata. Time to eat. Wait. What do you mean this is not my lunch, but rather my neuro exam? I have to be able to identify this stringy mess as nerves? You're joking, right? Nerves can be tricky to identify, especially when they're all bunched together and look more like your student-friendly bowl of spaghetti than a nerve plexus. But don't worry, that's why we're here. In this tutorial, we'll be making sense of this complex network and supply you with some tips and tricks to identify them. Let's get started learning about the sacral plexus. Before we get started, here's a quick overview of what we'll cover today. We'll start by talking about the sacral plexus as a whole, learning where it is and what it is composed of. We'll then look at the spinal nerves that contribute to the sacral plexus. Next up will be the main, big nerves that travel into the lower limb. And lastly, we'll finish up with nerves of the gluteal region and the perineum, including any other small branches we may have missed. So to start, what is the sacral plexus? The sacral plexus is a network of nerves that is formed from the interconnections between the anterior rami of spinal nerves from L4 to S4. This plexus mainly serves the lower limb, the largest of its nerves travelling into the posterior thigh. The sacral plexus also innervates muscles of the gluteal region and the perineum, in addition to providing sensation to those areas as well. In this image, we're looking into a female pelvis from the right side, and we can see much of the left pelvic muscles and the neurovasculature. Highlighted in green, hiding in this area, is much of the sacral plexus. It lies against the posterior aspect of the pelvic wall, anterior to the piriformis muscle, and posterior to the internal iliac artery and vein. This is the sacral plexus image that we're going to get really familiar with today. It may look like spaghetti now, trust me, but you'll be able to identify each nerve in no time. So we know the spinal nerves L4 to S4 contribute to the sacral plexus, but let's have a look at these in a bit more detail so we know exactly which parts of these nerves are involved here. As the spinal cord travels inferiorly through the vertebral canal, it gives rise to a pair of spinal nerves at every vertebral level. These spinal nerves exit the vertebral column through the intervertebral or sacral foramina and provide innervation to muscles, skin and organs throughout the body. When spinal nerves exit through the intervertebral foramina, they split into two rami, an anterior ramus and a posterior ramus. The posterior ramus is smaller, usually travelling immediately posteriorly to provide innervation to structures such as the deep muscles and the skin of the back. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.